love to ask for a little grace this evening. It's been a minute since I've been in this place, in this seat, I should say. At this time, I'd like to call our August 2021 Planning Commission meeting to order. Roll call. Stephanie? Today. Birmingham? Here. Bridges? Here. Chancellor? Yeager? Lazenby? Here. Marshall? Here. McCord? Here. Reese? Here. Breitenbaugh? Here. Thank you. Um, before we start, I'd like to give a brief overview of the process for the public meeting of the Auburn City Planning Commission. The Commission will be presented with an agenda item tonight by the City Planning Department. The representatives for the agenda item will have the opportunity to make comments and or answer specific questions from the Commission. I will open a public hearing as appropriate as this will be the opportunity for you to address the Commission about the agenda item at hand. We want everyone to be heard. I ask that you keep your time to talk to five minutes and please keep your comments relevant to the case at hand. After everyone has spoken, I'll close the public hearing. The representative and staff will then have the opportunity to answer any questions or respond to issues brought up during the hearing. Then I will open the floor to the commissioners for discussion, motions, and a vote. The commission will vote based on state laws and local laws, the city's comprehensive plan 2030, and the good of the community. Having summarized the basics of the planning commission, hearing, and voting process, I would also like to summarize our role and responsibility related to the approval of subdivision plats. By Alabama statute, a municipal planning commission, such as ours, is the final approval authority for subdivision plats. With regard to subdivision plats, the commission acts as an administrative body and is bound by the limitations contained in state laws, the city zoning ordinance, and the subdivision regulations previously adopted by the commission. While public hearings are required on each plat, and we welcome any and all public comments concerning these items, please understand that the Commission's authority is strictly limited to confirming that the plat meets or exceeds the specific requirements codified in laws and regulations previously described. I would like to make it a point specifically for the public in attendance. As you know, the Planning Commission is an advisory board to the City Council, except in cases of subdivision decisions, which we are charged with making a final decision. All other decisions will be made by the City Council after consideration of the Planning Commission's position. I ask that if you intend to speak during any public hearing this evening, please sign in virtually, not virtually, <coughs> today you can sign in person, by stating your name and address for the record and limit your comments to five minutes. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to open for citizen communication for anything that is either on the consent agenda and or not not currently on this agenda if you have anything you'd like to say seeing no one we will move on to old business <clears throat> yes tonight's old business um the earnest annexation and the following four items relative to the the bottle project have been requested by the applicant to be postponed to next month's meeting, which is September 9th. Okay. We will have to go through each of these individually as Correct. a commission. So the first is the annexation portion, PL 2021-00371. The request is to postpone a date certain September 9th. So moved. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You opposed. Thank you. The second is the request from rule to comprehensive development district. Postponed a date certain of September the 9th. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. The second is a section to be change from rural to development district housing to be postponed to date certain of September 9th. So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. The third one is for a plan development district overlay postponement to date certain of September 9th. So moved. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And final is recommendation for conditional use approvals, postponement to date certain of September 9th. I moved. Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Thank you. That concludes old business. One moment. Get this out of the way. Now on to our consent agenda for the evening. Robinson, will you give us those items? Sure. The consent agenda this evening consists of packet, min packet meeting minutes from July as well as the regular meeting minutes from July and a final plat application for Yarborough Farms Oakmont Phase 1. It's a 26 lot performance residential development um, comprised of 40, 43 acres and it's located at the terminus of Andrews, I believe, Andrews Avenue. Okay. Thank you. Um, consent agenda. Any questions, commissioners? Move, move to move. approve. Sorry. Motion. Move to approve. I have a second to it. I think I heard. A second. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed the second. Thank you. Motion to approve and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Now we will move on to new business. Our first item on the agenda is Ms. Robinson. Yes. Okay, so the first item on new business is a rezoning comprised of six lots on Summerhill Road and Florence Drive specifically lots one through four, 43 and 44 of Village View subdivision. The request is from the city <clears throat> to rezone from DDH to MDRD. And you probably recall back earlier this year, um, a request was made by the property owner to the south of these properties on the corner of Summerhill and Harper Avenue to rezone from DDH to MDRD. Um, to redevelop his duplexes. Uh, when the Harper Avenue focus area study was approved, most of the area was zoned RDD, and there were two portions that were zoned NC5 and NC12, and most of the RDD changed to either MDRD, CRD, E, and I believe a portion up north was CDD. Um, but the remaining area, including the NC-12, was also zoned to CRDE because it was getting closer to the commercial node at Dean and Glen, except for the other NC-5, which was rezoned to DDH. That is an older neighborhood comprised of mostly single family residences and a few duplexes. But the purpose of rezoning it from a specific single family zone, such as NC, to DDH was to allow a variety and a different um, styles of residential developments, residential housing. When the property owner came in for the MDRD for the, his two lots, it was realized that these lots were too small to get the density to achieve any other housing type but single family. So this is a request to rezone the existing duplexes in the area to MDRD, which is a higher density than DDH, but given the size constraints of these lots, the density of 12 units an acre will not be achieved, could not be achieved, even with consolidating properties. So the staff recommends approval, and if you have any questions, I will be glad to provide an answer. We did get a couple of calls on this, by the way. Um, one was from an adjoining property owner, and they were in favor. We are. We are the, you, the city. You are. The city is you happy. are it. That's right. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. This does require a public hearing. I'd like to open that now. Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing and discussion with commissioners or motion. Well, I want to say that, that I commend the staff for being alert to the fact that if there is a need 
if we to change the zone of a small parcel of a couple of lots for the then it might suggest we need to study the whole area and make some adjustments there and you did and I appreciate it and I support this Would you like to make that a motion? Yeah, I move. I move to approve uh, PL 2021 460 Village View Rezoning. Recommend to Council. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all. Next <coughs> item Southview Rezoning. <coughs> Miss Kennedy. Yes, good evening. This is a rezoning request um, from David Slocum of Pinnacle Design Group on behalf of Curtis and Pauline Jolly. Um, they are requesting to rezone approximately 20 acres at the terminus of Southview Drive from rural to the development district housing. Here you can see the aerial with the um, area to be rezoned. There are several easements existing on the lot. And this is an aerial just without the exhibit to show you what's on there currently. We have not received any calls um, regarding this rezoning and staff is recommending approval. Thank you. This also applicant representative is here. Thank you. Um, Requires a public hearing. I'd like to open that now. Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing. Commissioners. I'll make a motion to approve uh, PL 2021 uh, 00455. I'll second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have. Same location, Ms. Kennedy. Yes, this is um, a conditional use request to develop the same property you just saw in the rezoning to townhomes. Um, this is the preliminary concept plan showing the 112 townhome lots to be located on the site should you approve the conditional use request. Um, you're familiar with a few of the items we've discussed regarding the connection of this extension of Southview Drive to the existing step out of East Veterans Boulevard, um, as well as some of the lots with some property within the easements that may need, need to be reconfigured. Um, other than that, staff is recommending approval of this. And again, we received no communication regarding this case. Does require public hearing? like to open that now. Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Commissioners. Are there any, I saw an additional email about a staff comment. That was the verbiage on the, can we just, can I make a move, motion to approve with all staff comments, including. You have it? Okay, well, let's do that. That's fine, go ahead. Yes. It's the memo dated August 11th, 7.41 a.m. Are you want me to make the motion? Yes, oh, oh, I thought you were going to read it. Right. I, I see. I, 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 I move uh, for approval to recommend to City Council the conditional use approval for performance residential townhouse use uh, subject to all of the comments in the staff packet as well as the Memorandum provided to the commission on Wednesday, dated Wednesday, August 11th, subject uh, Southview Town Homes Conditional Use. Second, does that work? Mm -hmm. And to be clear, those are the conditions that they need to move those lots out yes, of the yes. easements yeah. and provide connectivity. Yes, but I could, you know, if you want that sorry. worded in the motion, then I, I, I can I include that. that uh, I think that would be clearer okay. if it were included. All right. Subject to all of the conditions stated in the in the uh, staff report, in addition to the developer property owner being responsible for design and construction of Southview Drive to the west property line is required by the city engineer, 
providing a stub out for future connectivity to Veterans Boulevard. The permanent cul-de-sac would be removed and if required by the city, a temporary cul-de-sac provided until a future connection to Veterans Boulevard is accomplished. <clears throat> And, and lots of the easement. And, oh, and lots, <laughs> lots one, two, and three be reconfigured. I, I assumed that would have to be. Uh, lots one, two, and three be reconfigured such that they are allowed reasonable use of their land and are not impeded by the presence of either the Alabama power or gas easements currently existing on the site. Thank you. So there. Thank you. <laughs> I'll second that. I'll do the easy part. <laughs> Thank you. I have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We're moving on to Plainsman Lake, The Haven. Mr. Howell. Union Commissioners, the uh, next three applications on your agenda are, are related to the same development and are three different applications for three different subdivisions within it. The first one is called The Haven. The, excuse me, The Haven. It's a preliminary plat approval request for a 67 lot conventional subdivision. It'll include 66 residential lots and one open space lot. It's approximately 18 and a half acres in the DDH zoning district, just to the west of the Solomir subdivision and to the north of the uh, uh, the, uh, the city's industrial area. Um, you have Webster Road to the south and to the west and uh, a little area that's in the county just on the opposite side of the uh, development right here. This is an overview that shows the, the three different uh, sections of the development. The Haven itself is highlighted in white. This is the subdivision itself oriented with north facing to your right. It provides connection to the adjacent subdivision uh, from two different stub outs that, in, that is part of the Solomir subdivision. The gross density for this development is a little over three and a half dwelling units per acre, which is uh, within the, the zoning district. And the average lot is approximately uh, 0.22 acres. Staff is recommending approval of, with comment. One of the comments in your packet includes a uh, a statement that a separate plat is going to be required before this comes to final. That plat is going to have need to come to you in October, or excuse me, uh, September, so it can be dedicated by the city in October. The purpose of that plat is to, satis is to uh, support the city's right of way, uh, right of way attainment for the connector road that moves from MLK to Richland. It'll go along, it's to the, uh, it'll be to the west of the, the Haven area, but will be part of this overall development. The timing of that's important because it'll, uh, this, this is a city, that will be a city project. Um, and be able, once, it, uh, once the city has it, we'll be able to start, start construction and that will facilitate a, not only the, uh, the not only the traffic flow for the residents in the area, but also for construction access for many of the different sub many of the different subdivisions part of this development. The access for the Haven specifically will not come from that. Uh, it, as a result of the fact that it does not connect over to the connector. Just to the west of this this subdivision, you have Plainsman Lake and the wetlands directly south of it between the lake and MLK. Connecting to the west would not be possible for this one. Uh, and so the applicant is proposing to use the MLK as its access point. They have to coordinate that and get approval from ALDOT, which they have already been working with. They don't have the, re they don't have a, um, they don't have the, uh, the, the final decision from them yet. We've had a lot of conversations with the local uh, subdivision in Solomir. Uh, lots of concern over there with regard to the construction entrance that I just spoke of, as well as the connection to the west, which also was just mentioned, and also uh, the concern about Solomir itself being uh, being completed. However, just because the subdivision of Solomir isn't 
does not have any more available lots, that subdivision, just like this one here, is abiding by the subdivision regulations that require stub outs to adjacent properties for future development. When Solomir came before the council and was, uh, excuse me, came before commission was approved, it involved five different stub outs to adjacent properties to facilitate future development and connectivity through them. And so they are, they will benefit from this as well as the, uh, uh, as well as the subdivision that's under development proposal now. Questions uh, from staff or to staff. Any additional staff comments other than that one that we should be aware of that are? None. Okay. Do we have any timeline on the Richland connector? Or are we waiting for? The connector, well. Oh. Alice, I guess that's an Allison question. You know I like to ask you questions. <laughs> We are current, we're currently in permitting with, okay. um, we've submitted a permit to ALDOT for the improvements on 14. We're also working with the State Historic Commission on some cultural resources. Um, we are ready to submit our Corps of Engineers permit and the plans are around 90% complete. So okay. we're moving forward with our permitting right now, but okay. we still hope to bid in the fall. Okay. So conceivably though, at some point, the residents of Solomon will be able to come out, take a right and then cut back up that Richland Road yes, connector even before these other developments are completed potentially? The, the developer of Plainsman Lake mm -hmm. will make the connecting pieces, if you will. Okay. Uh, we're just building the connector road from Richland Road down to MLK. Down to, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking oh, about. So yes. they could come out on oh, 14, come out on 14 and, right. yes, and, then, and then take another right at the Richland connector. Yes. Even if, if those other two developments are not there yet. That's correct. So that's a big benefit. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <clears throat> One quick question, just curiosity. Do, do the lots on the lakeside, uh, do they go all the way to the lake? Or is there an easement around the lake, going to be an easement around the lake? The lake itself will be part of one of the other uh, subdivisions that you're about, about to hear. It'll be considered part of its open space and will be open to um, and we'll be open to uh, all, all residents to the subdivision. So, so there's going to be an easement then behind these lots. The lot itself that the lake will be part of, it, and uh, it's kind of easier to see on this subdivision here. It'll include uh, four different connections to yeah, that those. round, uh, to that connector road that's yeah. within this subdivision. Uh, the Haven connection, not the... Uh, Richland connection. Those four different uh, frontage will those will be open space lots that actually connect into the Havens Road. And so anybody uh, I, that lives in this subdivision or in Solomir next to it can go through that through that property and onto the lake if they. So want. they you can walk around the lake without trespassing on the private lots that Correct. abut it. Okay. Okay, this does require a public hearing. We are preliminary plat approval for the Haven. I'll open the public hearing. Hi, my name is Mallory Hayes. I live at 1784 Solomir Court, and I sent an email to the Planning Commission regarding this uh, Haven plat. Um, I'm going to, to kind of summarize it in this if you haven't had a chance to read it. But I do want to say I appreci appreciate Ms. Yeager's comments. Um, that's addressing some of the concerns that I had. Uh, my main point here is that I'd really like for the Planning Commission to really strongly consider the impacts of this development regarding traffic safety between Solomir Lane and Highway 14. My largest concern is with this section, the Haven, because there is no other outlet. Solomir uh, subdivision currently only has one entrance and one exit coming from the same area going to 14. It is dangerous. In fact, there was an accident there this morning with a high school student. Um, adding the lots that are the Haven to the subdivision with a single exit increases more traffic, increases more wait time, and people tend to take risks. What I want the, what I hope that the, the Planning Commission will consider is the timing, as Ms. Yeager already pointed out, that the Richland Road Connector is a big priority. If the Richland Road Connector can be built, then yes, we could turn right out of the subdivision. 
But also importantly, if the other uh, section going up for um, consideration, the Prosper, is also built before the Haven, then that will provide a northbound connection between the two subdivisions, giving the people in the northern part of Solomir subdivision another opportunity to get out without going all the way down to Highway 14. So specifically, my concern is for the timing of the Haven, that whenever it is built, that it is built after there are other exits, after the um, connector road is built. And I understand that you can't necessarily require the timing. But I do hope that if you see any opportunities in the future to speed along the other things that can help for safety of that, that would be greatly appreciated by the Solomir residents. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hayes. <clears throat> my name is Sally Island. I live at 142 Denali Lane, and my husband and I did send you a letter, but this I'm actually reading a letter for Stephen and Leslie Farrington, who live at 139 Denali Lane. Um, this is regarding a landscape buffer. They did also send you a separate email, but they didn't include this in it. Members of the Planning Commission, due to work conflicts, we are unable to participate in this evening's meeting. We appreciate the developer's plan to implement a landscape buffer that runs along the east side of the proposed plat of the Haven adjacent to the current homes located on Denali Lane. We would request that the developer preserve any desirable trees that are four inch diameter at breast height or larger. Desirable trees would include pine, pecan, hickory, walnut, tulip, poplar, etc. Noxious trees such as sweet gum, mimosa, tallow tree, and china berry can be removed along with any trees showing obvious insect or disease damage that would render them unsafe. Thank you for your attention to this request and we look forward to working with the developer to preserve the natural beauty of our neighborhood. Stephen and Leslie Farrington. Uh, I'm Al Island. I live with that lady at 142 <laughs> in <Nile> Lane. <clears throat> and I'm speaking for us, uh, for myself. Uh, we did send a letter, and I hope you got that and had a chance to read it. I'm not going to read it to you. I just really want to highlight some things that are a concern. Um, and I missed the name of the lady that spoke earlier, but she summed up a lot of that pretty well. Uh, when it, And the timing would be a huge thing about Part A coming in because there is no outlet. It's going to have to come through Solomir regardless until there's some, some other alternative. Uh, so that is a concern. Now, when Part B goes in, that's 124 more housing units. We already have 235 in Solomir. So if you had the 66, now we're at 301 or something. Check my math. If you had 124, you're over 400. Uh, I was told by three people at the council meeting that had to do with this uh, commission that sort of the target for the number of households per entrance exit was, you know, like 100. Uh, we're already right now at 235 to 1. Uh, if you want to make that 300 to 1, do A first. If you want to make it 435 to 2, then do all, all of it. But the math is still going to come out a lot more than 100 to 1. So I would just say this, if, if that's the target uh, and somebody said, oh, that's just kind of an idea. That's what I was told. You know, it's just sort of a guide. I said, well, if I used a guide like that to go somewhere, I'd be lost before I got out, out of my neighborhood. Either change the guide, you know, get something closer, but 200 plus percent of what your target is doesn't really make sense to me. I don't understand that. Uh, I understand the city wanting to add households we're growing we like that uh, I get that but um, and I know it's money for the city which means it's good for everybody and it's money in the pocket of some other folks that are building those houses but it shouldn't be at the expense of people already living here and already have a household in an existing neighborhood and so we already have a strain on that one outlet as was pointed out earlier already an accident second day of school we got already have an accident over there um, you already got 235 households coming through that. And I understand somebody said, well, when it was built, it was the idea that it would sub out and different. Well, that's fine, but there has to be some accommodation for when it's subbed out that there has to be an outlet somewhere where traffic can go a different way. 
You can't send, you know, 300 households through one, one place that's already dangerous. So I know my granddaddy might have said the, the horse is already out of the barn. I hope that's not the case here. But if it is, then maybe in the future, we might want to take a closer look at that instead of just, you know, rubber stamping because we're growing. You know, um, could we have two of those uh, developments that are connected to the connector road? And maybe we don't do A. Maybe it just becomes a nice place for people to gather out there by the lake. You know, uh, I'm just throwing that out because it seems like that really wasn't considered on the front end. I, I don't expect it to be considered by the people that want to make money off of it, but you guys are supposed to represent us. Okay, so that's just an appeal to common sense. Um, and if you think that adding the connector road and, and when, when B goes in and a lot of the people from Solomir can go down that way and go out, some will, but you're still talking about twice as much as your target is. And I know that target may be there for different reasons and it doesn't always have an effect on a household per, you know, I, I know there's different factors, but that still seems like a way off of what you're hoping for, if you really are hoping for 100 to 1. I mean, 120 to 1, 150 to 1, but this is 235 to 1 already and you're looking at going to 300. So uh, if you can't do it, I don't really understand why you can't do it, but I'd love to hear an explanation, you know, when the time comes about why we're willing to just go past that and move on. When it's a strain already and it's about safety. Uh, and, and if it comes up later, I still got 44 seconds. If it comes up later, oh, we'll put a traffic light. Traffic lights don't solve everything. There's still that many cars that have to go through there. And if you've been to Solomir, when you come into the neighborhood, there's immediately a crossing street, which would be one of the ones that connects to A. So you're gonna have a lot of people up there just sitting there waiting to even have a chance if there was a traffic light there. So it's, it's gonna be a major pain there unless we open it up somehow. And so maybe somewhere in the past, it would have been a good idea to say, if you're gonna add, keep adding to Solomir, somebody's gonna to have to take a road out so we can get out of here. But anyway, thank you, thank you for your time and I appreciate your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Island. Hey, my name's Adam Dabbs. I reside on 174 Denali Lane. Uh, that would be north, the second to last house uh, to this new development. Just kind of want to follow up on what my neighbor said. He kind of hit the nail on the head with this, just this A proposal um, with adding these lots, just creating another bottleneck of traffic to where we are already ending in our subdivision and our cul-de-sac. Um, Minus that concern also without having a topographic view of this, north of, north of my lot would probably fall under an SMZ, which is a stream management zone, which runs east to west. So without a topographic and knowing where that wetland extends, it's kind of a marsh at the end of our lots. So proposing building on that, disturbing a wildlife zone as well, is not really a feasible area to start without a buildup, but that's just, that's one other concern is impeding on an SMZ and a wetland area, but just creating that bottleneck of that much more traffic to what we already have just doesn't seem feasible and just kind of a request of a, either being removed or it being buffered off from the end of our cul-de-sac with an exit back to 14. And, uh, Anyway, thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Andrew Visico. Uh, I live at 178 Denali Lane, which is at the end of, uh, right at the very end of the cul-de-sac. Um, so I just want to, I'm going to skip the portion. I did send you guys a, an email to the commission and I'm just going to skip that, the, the portion with the traffic because that's basically reiterating everything that everybody else has concerns with and I'm right there with them. Um, I'm just going to get right to the section where, you know, the concerns I have where I'm at currently on my property. Um, 
the plan that is currently in motion that is set to clear the land and start construction of new homes in the very near, near future. Uh, in the current plot plan that is currently up for review, the board, the builder is proposing building a lot right next to 178 Denali Lane. Currently, the property sits at the end of a cul-de-sac with shadows a wooded area. Uh, the plan shows adding in a center circle uh, to turn the cul-de-sac into a traffic circle. Now, I don't know if that plan's changed, but that was what originally what was what was proposed. Um, the house was built in such a way that it was obvious that it was never intended on additional lots or joining the cul-de-sac to future streets. Uh, there is water drainage issues as well. Uh, my concern is uh, the property was built in such a way that the grading of the property uh, makes the house overlook the privacy fence. So if you go out in my backyard, I have a raised deck that looks over the privacy fence, which currently shadows the, uh, the woods. Um, if the plan is followed uh, by the developer, uh, adding a lot to 178 Denali Lane next to it will no longer allow any privacy in the backyard. Uh, I'm asking developer, the developer to leave a barrier next to the property to keep the property as close as the way it is, is now as possible. Uh, the house was obviously, if, you, if you've been, ever been back there, it's, uh, it was built in, uh, in such a way uh, that that's the way it was designed is, is to have those, those woods there uh, with the grading of the property uh, the way it is. Um, and uh, that adds character and value to the home. Um, if the plan follows through, this will affect the, 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 uh, the value of the property, in my opinion. There will be no privacy with neighbors and vice versa. They'll ha they will have no privacy because they'll be looking at me and I'll be looking at them because they'll be obviously be lower than me. Uh, turning the cul-de-sac into a, into a traffic circle uh, adds another issue. Uh, the house was built in such a way that the driveway is at an angle in relation to the cul-de-sac. Uh, turning the cul-de-sac into a traffic circle will make driveway entry, entry awkward. Um, along with driveway entry concerns, the current plan would allow, would make off-street parking impossible. Uh, HOA allots a certain amount of off-street parking per household. Uh, I'm asking for the newly joined section uh, of the new construction to be joined with a uh, planned connector road from Highway 14 to Richland Road. If this is not to be accommodated, then I'm asking uh, that uh, the driveway be extended along with my neighbors um, and just dissolve the call to stack into the rest of the street. So just basically make it a regular street instead of a turnaround. Um, also, as my neighbor just mentioned, 178 Denali Lane is surrounded by wetlands that is connected to Lake Plainsman. There's a natural creek that runs along the back of the property which drains into Lake Plainsman. The creek overflows into a wetland area around the property, basically where you would try, where this lot would be potentially be built. Um, Building a lot next to my property would create serious issues for the proposed property as all drainage water ends up in the lot next to the property that is currently proposed for development. Uh, building a lot next to 178 Denali Lane would disrupt natural drainage and uh, wetland. There is also numerous wildlife that lives in and around the creek and wetland area. Uh, consider consideration on drainage solutions and wildlife would need to be taken into account before building would be conducted. Um, you know. I'm asking for ser serious consideration uh, for the concerns mentioned. Uh, feel free to reach out. You know, I'm, I'm open if, if anybody wants to stop over and, and, and look in person because, I mean, if you, if you ever come there, you would know exactly right off the bat what I'm talking about, where the house is situated, um, you know, in conjunction to where you guys are planning on, where this plan is proposed. So, and I'm, I'm right at the end, I don't know, we're, we're no, on the north side of section, where is that section A? <coughs> section A, yeah, section A. So that's all I got. Thank you, Thank guys. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Brandy Brunson, and I reside at 1787 Solomere Court. And I would reiterate many of the points that my neighbors have mentioned here tonight, including the troubles with the road and the safety. Um, one thing that I do want to reiterate, though, um, as my neighbor just mentioned, that a lot of these homes were built with very poor grading. Um, we have a lot of drainage issues. I live on the south side of Solomere Court, second lot in, and I can tell you that just about everyone on my side of the street has had to put French drains in 
to avoid their yards being just a marsh. And so I would ask that um, if this is going to continue, that serious consideration um, be intentional, intentional about the grading and the runoff of stormwater drainage. Um, another thing, I, my home was built in 2012. I bought it January 1st of 2013. When I did, there were two lots um, on the northwest side of the cul-de-sac that my realtor said, you know, these lots are too small, they'll never be built on, so you're guaranteed to have some privacy in a quiet cul-de-sac. And of course, that was probably my naivety at that time to believe that that would be sustained. Um, but I do want you to take that into consideration because a lot of people bought in that area because of that very reason. They have children, it's a quiet cul-de-sac. Um, the safety issues there are very, very minimal. It's safe for our kids to go out in the street, play, play basketball, ride their scooters, such things. Opening up that cul-de-sac to another neighborhood is certainly going to pose a danger to small children that um, are used to playing in the street. And our neighbors, I think, I, I proudly watch out for them when I'm outside. I think everyone does. The third point I want to make is that Solomir has, as we have heard tonight, one entrance, one exit. I've always been told that if you live in a neighborhood with one entrance and one exit, it's a lot easier to manage crime. Um, I won't be the only one to probably tell you that we've had quite a number of break-ins um, in cars that have been left on the street. We've installed security cameras. Um, I thank the HOA for spearheading that. One of my fears is that if we start connecting into these large neighborhoods that that crime is going to increase. So I'd also ask that increased security be considered um, as this project moves forward. Um, I don't know how much more time I have, two minutes. You know, I love Solomir. It's a great neighborhood. I just want it to be maintained in that way. And, um, as this new project goes up, just please be considerate of the people who have lived there for many years. Um, so I thank you all for your attention tonight. Like I said, my name is Brandy Brunson, 1787 Solomir Court. If you'd like to come out and visit my home, if you'd like to contact me about anything, I'm glad to answer questions. Thank you. Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. Commissioners. Representative. Yeah. Representative is here. You would like would you like to chat about some of the concerns you've heard heard here tonight? Yes, I'm Brian and Bolt with Bolt Engineering, representing Happy Houston Builder and Mr. Webster. Um, to, to help you with this section's access, we have discussed a construction easement to access straight from 14 into this development. Uh, so the construction access can take direct access from 14 and won't have to go through the neighborhood until they get to the last home that's being constructed. And then it's probably important to know that the overall development, sections A and B, the developer intends to start them as close to simultaneous as possible and those timelines <coughs> converge with just a little overlap. We, you know, we're not even at permitting yet, but with the city's connector road coming through and the developer pushing to get section B put in, then that's going to help to alleviate the issues that they're having. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Commissioners, have any questions for the representative? I mean, mm -hmm. my question was, um, like one of the people said about the time and in terms of the subdivision, but you said that you're going to be as soon as close as possible in terms of getting started and completed. Right. So, you know, they don't start all the homes at one time either, but they okay. need to start doing earthwork. And as they get to final plat, they can start pulling building permits. And, you know, you're talking pretty late into 2022 which is consistent with when they're planning on opening up the connector road. Okay. Yeah, that was the intent of my question, because if that section, that second section were to, were to start first, per se, 
that's going to have to come through Solomir right now until that Richland Road connector is completed. So that was, you, you answered that question for me about, um, yeah, the development, I, mean, I would assume that. The developer's work and the city's mm -hmm. work would be taking, would be progressing simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of dirt that will have to be moved, so I know it's, pretty far into the distant future before anything substantial happens. So, okay. Anything about the I do have another question about, and this may be just for engineering, but the, the wetland in the sort of the marsh that they're talking about, kind of at either end of the lake. Yes, yeah, um, so both heads of the, you receive water. As you look at this, mm -hmm. you're looking at section A. Yeah. Sheet north and sheet southwest. Mm -hmm our wetland okay. and drainage features that are feeding the lake. So much like the residents right beside us, their backyards kind of end consistently. Mm -hmm. Theirs actually go a little farther in to that area than ours are showing. And so how close is that marsh down at the, on the, I guess, the south side where, where the new proposed development meets where Highway 14 is? is I mean, you know, is we're, there we're any... staying away from it. Okay. I, if I told you a number, I would be right. making it up. You'd be, okay. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> but during the city's review of the construction plans, mm -hmm. they're going to look at all that. And I'm assuming that's some engineering will handle with potential storm drainage and... Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is that also a reason that the exit can't come out for there? It's because of the wetlands in the way? And that's kind of yeah, one of the things we looked at and asked the developer to look at at some point during all of this was to look at another connection and it would be a fairly significant environmental impact if we were to cross uh, mm -hmm. on the south side across that stream. Yes, and the topo was an issue as well to yeah. make the connection. And where the construction entrance is going to be is not suitable for a permanent entrance, I would assume because of the proximity to that. the Solomir entrance. Is that correct? correct. Did you miss me? Um, where that construction entrance is proposed would not be suitable for like a permanent entrance because of its proximity to Solomir, right? Correct, and the DOT would likely not create, not, approve, not approve another permanent entrance. And that's the DOT that's approving all that, not Correct. the yes, city. Okay. Yeah. Can yeah. I ask a question? Allison, I, I've never heard this, huh? Hundred houses per outlet goal or target? What? That's actually a, a guide we we've used for many years. Jeff Ramsey, the prior city engineer, actually um, used it. There's also a clause in the fire code that we accepted out of. I think it's around 125 or 150. Um, but it's just a general guide that you want to have multiple ways in and out when you have over 100 homes. Um, the thing to think about um, with this is is stubbing out to something else kind of counts yeah. for us as another way out. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's just a general guide we've used for several years. It came about the, during yeah. the White Oaks era. It's not something that sounds like the engineering manual or anything. Like, it's just like a rule of thumb kind of thing. Correct. And when you say outlet, if, if we followed that, we would have curb cuts all over the place. And I don't see how that's feasible. And now I can understand more than 100 people, 100 houses on a street needing an outlet to connect to another street in the neighborhood but to connect a subdivision to a major thoroughfare a hundred that just doesn't I, 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 I can't think of any place that's actually been applied I can't it come to my memory that it's actually been applied the one that comes to mind is White Oaks uh, White Oaks if you know it it's a single yeah. entrance but there's an emergency access that's near Sagahatchee, um, and mm -hmm. that was the extra outlet, if you okay. will. But it, it exceeds 100 homes as well. Um, it's been a little bit difficult to enforce or to, um, I guess, enforce would be the word, because some people don't want to connect to mm -hmm. adjacent land. So hence our stance on connectivity as well. Okay. In the end result of all of this development will, will result in what? four or five? Yeah, so with the Richland connector, Solomir will have one, two, three connections that will mm -hmm. tie to the west. Mm -hmm. There's still a single access, I think it's Solomir Lane, two that's connecting to the north. And there's also a step out just off of Lightness Drive mm -hmm. that's a step to the east that okay. could connect to that future development. 
So the end, the end game will have those yes. Yes. exit points. Yes, ma'am. And, and a lot of that's about safety, too, not... It's about safety. It's about redundancy and access. And, mm -hmm. It's about emergency access. Mm -hmm. um, if, you know, if we had a tree fall, there would be another way mm -hmm. in and out. And actually, if we had adhered to that strictly, it w Solomir would not have been feasible. <laughs> you right. not have been built. It would have stopped about <clears throat> phase one and a half. Yeah. And I'm assuming part of that's the reason y'all are going to go ahead and do the road. Yes, ma'am. I mean, you're doing this road ahead of the way it normally <laughs> Yeah, we were doing this road before my, yeah. this development came in. Mm -hmm. um, it's just something that's been on our radar for a few mm -hmm. years, not a long, mm -hmm. long time, but, but several years, the city, we've been working on this connection. Logan, can we look at this one? So 501, that is the open space lot, correct? That runs along the backside of De what is Denali currently. That's correct. So is that runoff water or will it be left wooded? 501 is actually on a high point of the of the subdivision. Okay. As it's worth noting, I think the uh, one of the residents pointed out that that lot it does serve as a buffer between the properties. It's worth noting that the Solomir subdivision is a performance subdivision and would require buffering itself to buffer adjacent properties of lesser intensity from the impacts of it. This being a conventional subdivision, it will be considered a less intense, yes. um, less intense use, and therefore no buffer is required for them to get. The developer is choosing to provide one anyway. Okay, okay. I think we're ready for motion. Questions? I uh, move that the Haven at Plainsman Lake preliminary plat uh, be approved. Staff uh, subject to all staff comments. Please yes. also remember that we need to adjust the staff comment to include the. Uh, did I say that? Did I, already, did I jump over that? No, you mentioned it at the very beginning. Okay. The separate plat needed. The separate plat doesn't. Um, okay. Yeah. Though the plat does not need to indicate each phase as an additional lot. Say that again. As it currently says, the separate plat needs to indicate each individual phase as okay. a uh, different separate lot. That can be struck. It just needs to. We need a separate plat by your September regular meeting to connect to, to provide the right of way for the connector road. Okay, I include that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mm, I think I might need a roll call. <laughs> Please. Bridges? No. Yeager? Yes. Lazenby? Yes. Marshall? Yes. McCord? Yes. Reese? Yes. Brightonball? No. Birmingham? Yes. Thank you. Moving on to the next Plainsman Lake, the Prosper. Ms. Trowell. Yes, ma'am. All right. This is the subdivision immediately to the north of what you just uh, heard. This is a preliminary plat request for 125 conventional lot subdivision. It'll include 124 residential lots and one uh, detention lot on approximately 43 acres in the DDH zoning district. It's immediately west of the Solomir subdivision and provides connection or provides connection to Kenai Pass uh, and into the future connector to the west. Here you see the uh, you see the oh, how the that subdivision integrates with the overall development. It just it includes a uh, access to the to the, the lake property to the south and does provide connection east west and also provides a stub out to the north. 
Here's the individual plot itself and an aerial. The uh, proposed the proposed density is uh, 2.88 dwelling units per acre, and the average uh, lot is approximately 0.28 acres. And like the previous application, planning comment does include a statement about the the plat needing to incorporate individual phases as lots and that needs to be modified as well subject to your questions okay thank you this does require a public hearing i'll open that now for plainsmen like the prosper seeing no one i will close the public hearing commissioners motions I, I do have a question is there is there buffering required between those the existing and the new or is it because I mean I know it's basically the same type of there is no buffer requirement this is a conventional lot subdivision back, as well backed up to conventional okay. thank you it would just be a typo I see on can I pass the amenities area on the actual preliminary plan it does not show the additional to additional cut Right here. Is that just a? That was one oh, of the okay. GIS comments. Uh, there's a. That's included. In, it will be addressed before final. Well, I will move to approve PL 2021-464 with all staff comments and with the individual or separate lot comment struck stricken I have a motion a second I have a motion and a second all in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed thank you next on the agenda Plainsman Lake the vistas all right this is the third of three subdivisions for this uh, this development. This is a performance plat request for 133 lots of uh, 130 townhouses and three open space lots. It will be on approximately 73 and a half acres. This will be on the north side of Martin Luther King uh, to the west of the two subdivisions you just heard. Also in the DDH zoning district, it'll include as part of it, uh, the connector road in question, as well as the lake property itself, you can see the, the connector right there moved <coughs> from uh, north to south, and all townhomes take access off of that connector, uh, off of roads that are off of that connector. The Greenway and Green Space plan for the sea does include a uh, uh, greenway which will be part of the which will be part of that engineered uh, connector road and construct at the same time with it uh, proposed gross density for this is a little over a uh, one and a half dwelling units per acre and the average townhouse lots approximately 0 0.07 acres 55 acres of the development uh, which equals out to 75 percent will be used as open space and once again the planning comment needs to be modified for the to to remove the individual lot requirement subject to your questions thank you this does also require a public hearing would like to open that now if anyone would like to speak on the vistas seeing no one we're going to close the public hearing commissioners I make a motion to approve agenda item 12 with uh, all staff comment comments except for um, scratching the separate plat requirement. Um, so. Second, plat plat is required. For but the separate, sorry, but not the every lot. Separate. Lot, sorry. Right. <laughs> sorry about that. A second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Here's. Thank you. Two. 
Mitchell Clayton Lands. Mr. Kip. Good evening, commissioners. This is a request from Foresight Group LLC on behalf of Clayton Properties Group Incorporated and Deborah and John Mitchell, the property owners. The uh, plat before you includes a preliminary and final plat. Uh, the subject property is uh, located in the MIMS Trail Plan Development District and is surrounded by similar zoning. Here is a impromptu explanation of what the plat intends to achieve. I'll just show you the plat here quickly and kind of jump over to this. Essentially, MIMS Trail Road, they're proposing to extend it by adding new right-of-way. Anytime new right-of-way is shown on a plat, even if it involves less than four lots, it requires uh, approval <coughs> by this, this board. The proposal is to extend the right-of-way here, shown in blue. The existing right-of-way is outlined in red. And on top of that, do a bit of a land swap by incorporating this land from the remnant parcel of MIMS Trail into the Fountain View uh, property. You were left with a uh, portion of what's currently right of way, which this would need to be vacated before any uh, plats can be signed. Here is the plat. Staff does recommend approval. It meets the subdivision requirements. Uh, I did get a call from this gentleman. Uh, I believe that he's here tonight, I believe. Yep. So he'll, he'll, he'll probably have some questions and uh, concerns about the proposal. Um, and Brett is here. Yep. Uh, to answer any other questions. Thank you. This does require a public hearing. I'd like to open that now. Please come forward. Uh, Don Durden, uh, I'm the owner of Carriage Homes. Uh, I live at the corner of this uh, properties of uh, 2400 uh, Rutland Road and uh, Mims Trail. Um, they're drastically changing uh, the, the layout of my house or my land, including privacy fence. I've got symmetrical to the drop the sidewalk. Uh, they at Liberty went ahead and pulled the sidewalk up and the street up. I, my privacy fence follows because I followed the guidelines of what was there from the original plat. Now they want to extend, they want to extend, look real careful at the swoosh, drawing that, that, that uh, line at 62 feet, they want to extend my backyard. There's a privacy fence there. I have five dogs, rescue dogs. Uh, the privacy fence was, I moved out of a day U club to move to a house where I could have a privacy fence. And I built it the way I wanted it to fit the lot. That swoosh at the end is 62 feet. It crosses the road that's currently there now. It crosses Mims Trail. It doesn't go straight across, it, sh it shoots back and they don't want to make me whole. They, I've been talking with Dole Harris today. They said something, promised me, not promised me, said, yeah, we understand your concerns. We'll try to put do this, do this, and this. And there were some numbers involved. And then 3 o'clock, they said, no, we're not, we're not going to do that. And he may comment on it today. Uh, but there's irrigation. They're, they're trying to make me adopt a tenth of an acre. My, my yard is fully sodded, irrigation, and I have fertilizer, that, a program. Who wants to come cut 10% 10, 10 of an acre for me? Now, they want to put it into a common area. That's not fair for the neighborhood. So the common area is really my yard. Look at the swoosh. Look at the corner. It goes down to nothing. You Now, I'm not... No disrespect, but the people that have been out cutting, 
Mims Trail, who has a contract, are, for, are Mexican, okay, are, are hard to communicate with. Now, you tell me how they're going to cut my yard correctly without getting on my property. How are they going to landscape it? They're going to spend money. Landscape plants are the most expensive thing you put in there. you got to continuously maintain them. I've asked for some repairs on the fence and, and some to maintain this. And I, I strongly disagree with this. It, it's What I built is symmetrical with the side, current sidewalk, which they took, a, took their liberty took up. It's an eight-foot sidewalk. It's not your typical four-foot sidewalk. Uh, just a lot of things are going on that they just do and as far as I know they don't have approval and I've got pictures if, if you care to see them I've got pictures of the whole of the project um, to me it's not and, and, and I'm going to voice my ex concerns to the HOA it's not fair for them to pay $50 per cut 30 time, 35 times a year, $700 or $800 a year to maintain. Also, that sidewalk is going to be in that common area. I, I, edged, the, I edged the sidewalk and the curb. It's not going to be mine the way they're trying to do it. They're going to try to abandon it. So, And I've got pictures, if anybody cares to see them, you know, of what's out there and what they've already ripped up. They've already ripped, they've already ripped up the street and put down a thousand dollars worth of slag and rolled it in, bladed it in, as a temporary. There are so many people that go up and down this road that go to that mansion. That it, it, it I mean, I bet there's twelve to about twelve cars on the average a day that go up there. Today, I'm standing out there. The girl run runs down the road, splashes water on me, like just like the movie where you're standing there by the curb. The bus pulls up. Never had that. It happened. So. Uh, you know, I'm trying to be a good neighbor, but, you know, everybody's benefiting from this but me. I mean, yeah, my yard's getting bigger, but it's getting crazy looking. It doesn't look symmetrical. I want to make it right. I want to make it, they're taking away from the value of my house, and, you know, I'm going to a lawyer next if they don't want to play a game with, you know, if they don't want to try to be fair about it. Thank you. I, it, it, just think about that. Think about a landscape company and how many people are going to come out there and, land, and do landscaping, and it could change every year, whoever has the contract, and how are they going to communicate where my property is and their property is? Is it going to be irrigated? Is it going to be fertilized? Is it going to match mine? It's going to look stupid. And if they want to buy my house, I'll sell it for four fifty. Move out in a week. And if they think it gives me more value, they can have it. Be glad to. And I own twenty eight properties in Auburn, Montgomery, Lake Martin. And you know what they're doing is fine, but they need to be right about it and fair. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Public hearing still open. Anyone else? Let me close this. Close the public hearing. Thank you. Brett Basquin, Foresight Group, representing Clayton Properties. Um, what's being proposed tonight is the same thing that was being proposed in October of 2020 for preliminary plat approval for the subdivision. It was approved in January 2021 for uh, MEMS 11th preliminary plat approval. Um, we have approved plans through the city to uh, reroute the road and reconstruct the road. We're not out there willy-nilly just pulling up sidewalks and roads. Um, we're rerouting the road per the approved plans by the city and per the approved plat uh, that you guys um, have pre previously approved. What's before you tonight is we separated the plat out because um, when we're redirecting this road, um, one, it creates a, uh, a, a piece of right of way that's, uh, that the city has requested us to vacate, which uh, this gentleman uh, was referring to there in yellow. And then we're also uh, transferring some property that the mansion wants uh, around it 
Um, there was an undisturbed buffer that they're, they're getting, and then their common drive was on, our, was on the remaining property. Um, the common drive with the large trees that were planted was very critical for Dr. Mitchell, and he wanted to, to maintain that. So we're, we're uh, working to, for him to be able to keep his drive up to the mansion with the trees. And so the area that's in green on that is the property that's being <laughs> transferred uh, uh, that has part of the existing driveway uh, on it is being transferred to uh, Dr. Mitchell. So in order for us to, we split this up so we can do the lot separate, but go ahead and start the um, right away dedication and then the vacation of this property. When we vacate this property, uh, it's currently city of Auburn right away. Um, what we've been asked to do is we were willing to uh, give this gentleman the property uh, uh, for, the, for his benefit if, if he wants it. Um, we're working through that with the city um, on uh, if he doesn't want it. Um, I think we're willing to work with him um, and to understand his concerns about relocating his fence and those types of things. But I don't think a negotiation in regards to uh, you know transfer of money and all that kind of stuff is, is, is the Planning Commission's right uh, venue for that. So, um, uh, so we've, we've reached out. Um, uh, and, and told him that we were willing to, you know, that when we vacate this property, he can have it as part of his lot or, you know, we can deal with it as open space for the, for the community. We, you know, it doesn't matter to us, but we're willing to work with him on, on making that happen. So just want to give you a little background, um, but it, this has been the same thing that it's been. We're working off the proof set of plans and uh, um, hopefully we'll be, soon, uh, be done soon. I'd be happy to answer any questions. If we've already approved this, then why are we seeing this? I'm confused. Because we, when we did it before you before, it has 55 lots associated with it. So essentially all we're doing was we pulled out this little finger in order to be able to start the right-of-way vacation process. We got to create this right-of-way vacation piece to then vacate it. But we haven't approved it. Preliminary plats you have. Yeah. So we, we've, again, I don't know if we've approved it, why do we see it? Because it's separated now. It's right. When we came through before, no when we came through before the plat shows this plus 55 lots. Yeah. Okay. So all we did was take off the 55 lots and we're just doing this piece on the front because when we do the transfer with Dr. Mitchell, okay, we can't, Dr. Mitchell's right of way gets taken away when this piece gets vacated. You see what I mean? So we're having to extend the blue down to give this green, which is Dr. Mitchell's finger on public right of way down there. So we haven't approved this. Does the I mean, yellow I'm... part have anything to do with the, I know we didn't see the green because that wasn't part mm -hmm. of the 55 lot, but the yellow part. We were always rerouting re that right of way. That's always been, while we were redoing that intersection. So that's always been a lot line? On the previous preliminary plats, yes. Okay. The road alignment has been there. Has been there. So currently the city of Auburn has ownership of that yellow piece and mm -hmm. they y'all are offering it to the Carriage House Homes LLC, but he does not necessarily want to have to maintain that as part of his own yard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does, the, does the Mitchell property, does Fountain View have any interest? Oh, yeah. That? I mean, they would, property? Yeah, they would take it. Has that they, been a consideration? Yeah. Oh, we're, we're willing to give it to Dr. Dr. Mitchell wants it. So it would um, just connect to his green and be part of his entrance, you know, his I mean, entryway. Has that been proposed as a way to appease the property? Well, I, I think we've got to work through the city on exactly I mean, how that, that's, I mean, on how that works. So, Jana, you're referring to the yellow piece. The yellow piece. Yeah, yeah to the Mitchell. that yellow piece. Because um, I see he's... Yeah, he's a, he's some, adjacent to it as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That new Mitchell property boundary sort mm -hmm. of goes right up. Typically, when you vacate, that, so. typically when we vacate right away, when we vacate right away, typically you vacate and it gets split. Mm -hmm. You know, half of it goes to mm -hmm. the people on the sides. It's typically and I know what that's happens. not our no, purview to decide who the ultimate owner is going to be. But I, and I understand that. I know we can't tell you who Correct. to give property to. But um, I just wondered if that. I mean, he clearly does not want have to have to maintain additional property Correct. and move a fence and do those things. Correct. So, 
Yeah, I mean, Dr. Mitchell wants it. So that, that's, the, I mean, from what he said, that, that that wouldn't solve his problem, I don't think. But I hope you guys can work something out one way or another. But I think that may be outside of our purview, just in general, you know. But um, from what he told me, it doesn't seem like that would <laughs> that would fix anything. Can we go to the satellite? Real quick, and can you someone just run the mouse along what the new road is act what it's really going to look like when it's done? Okay, so that's going to go down into that phase 11, and right where the Mitchell, the Fountain View Drive kind of starts where those trees are. Is that correct? Kinda... He'll have a driveway off of that road that extends okay. to create his driveway. Okay, yep. I, uh, over the years, I've seen a lot of right-of-ways vacated, and I think this is the first time I've uh, I've heard of a property owner not wanting to have that land given to them for free. But I understand there are different circumstances and different <clears throat> situations, but but the. I think the way the Alabama law is written, if you vacate that right of way, it goes to the adjacent property owner. No questions asked. You don't, city doesn't have the authority to give it to somebody else. It's got to go to the adjacent property owner. And at this juncture, I've kind of got a couple of questions. Uh, do you have to vacate it? Could the city? I know the city could keep it. I mean, so yeah. we don't vacate it. It doesn't go to him. It stays the same, and the city maintains it as existing right away. It just yeah, well, a little I mean, bit the HO, shape. Yeah, and, the, and, the HOA would maintain it. You know, I mean, the HOA would the city be it. disagreeable to that? I mean, would they? For that little bit, for this little bit of uh, difficulty with its owner. I thought when Mr. Kip presented, he said it had to be vacated, so I didn't know. It, it was my understanding that to do the realignment, the you know they would typically, if they don't need the right of way, they vacate it. It's typically, just, yeah, cleaner. The it's cleaner, cleaner, the to efficient vacate thing it. to do. This is an exception. We got somebody that absolutely doesn't want it, and well, I, I think that's a little problem. unusual. But then my second, my second thing is if, if the city does not want to accept not vacating it can the three parties and the the person that owns the green can the three parties get together i.e the yellow and the green and this adjacent property owner and work out some kind of a some kind of a sale the, the adjacent property owner gets the property by right it's his and I'm suggesting maybe we set up some negotiation with the owner of the green if they want it to see if they cannot work out something between the two of them. Now you've got three parties that could be very well satisfied, but, but I don't know if that's been tried. But this is not our purview in no. any way, shape, or form. Just we have to cannot make not. any suggestion for that. I, I don't have a vote on that. Um, so I guess right now we have to come back to preliminary plat. Mm -hmm. well, My real question was, did the lot line change no, from same, same what we approved in January to now to be vacated? Well, we're looking at the public good and is the public best interest that we realign that road. And I think we decided it was some time ago. Correct. This merely consummates that. Commissioners, I will move to approve PL 2021-477 Mitchell Clayton Land Preliminary Plat. Second. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Next is the same, Mr. Kip. It's the final plat. Same property and dilemmas as presented previously. Um, the plat itself, barring all the talk of right of way and realignment, but the plat itself meets or exceeds the requirements of the subdivision regulations and staff recommends approval. This does not require public hearing. Commissioners. I'll move make a motion approval. to approve. 
PL 2021-00478, Mitchell Clayton Lands Final Plat with all staff comments. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just but, for the for the clarification or information, this will the right of way portion of this to be dedicated has to be accepted by city council and that will be the seventeenth. August seventeenth. Correct. Thank you. Motion carries. And I do wish y'all the best of luck to make a plan together. Okay. Next, we have Bucky's. Bucky's. Uh, she's not here. So, Stephanie, Miss <laughs> <Yeah>. Kennedy. <laughs> um, good evening. This is a preliminary plat request from Bucky's Alabama uh, to LLC. They are requesting preliminary plat approval for a conventional subdivision for lots which would normally not come to you all but they are proposing next slide please um, to dedicate this right away as you can see here um, located in the cdd district recently rezoned and brought into the city um, the reason for the four lots is to separate the uses previously approved through conditional use into their own lots um, I don't believe that we've received any communication on this, um, and so we are recommending approval. Are there any particular staff comments to address? I believe so, no. Okay. This does require a public hearing. Anyone would like to come forward? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Commissioners. Move to approve item 15 staff comments. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next to 403 Opelika Road. Mr. Gill. Yes, ma'am. This is a request from Jerome Anderson, uh, the property owner of Precision Cuts LLC. The subject property is located in the Corridor Redevelopment District, Urban. Uh, which is surrounded by zoning of similar type. The uh, request is before you tonight because the property owner is requesting a uh, multiple unit development, which would consist of a total of 10 units, 18 bedrooms, um, residential use, all, essentially a, the majority of commercial uses are permitted by right in CRDU. Uh, however, the residential portion is conditional in CRDU. So that is why it's before you this evening. Um, the future land use plan categorizes the property as mixed use two, which encourages a uh, vertical mixture of uses, which the applicant is proposing. Therefore, staff is recommending approval of the use. Um, here's a conceptual site plan that he's provided or as an uh, architect has provided. Um, you'll see in the staff report there are some comments related to parking, uh, landscaping, and generally things that will kind of be covered and reviewed during the DRT process. Uh, Mr. Anderson is aware of these requirements and uh, will work with a civil engineer to address these issues during that process. Um, Happy to answer any questions. We did receive two uh, correspondences about the property and, and project. One was generally in, in support, uh, provided that traffic be looked at, and the other was just for information. Uh, Mr. Anderson is here tonight, and happy to answer any questions you may have. I know I wasn't there, I'm sorry, but I have one question. It doesn't say anything about buffering. Is that part of, I know this is conditional use, but in staff comments. It, there, there are required a five foot uh, buffer around the site. They are proposing to do buffer yard averaging, which can be permitted uh, after review. Uh, essentially they offset the area of encroachment by adding additional landscaping. Got it, thank you. Okay, so conditional use approval for the residential portion. Right. This does require a public hearing, so I'll open that now. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Commissioners. 
Move to approve, approve item yeah. <laughs> 16 for conditional use. Second. Second. Um, I have a but, motion. Uh -huh. sorry. But we're not including, we're including all the staff comments about the site plan as we discussed in the packet meeting. There's numerous deficiencies, but they're not part of this motion or the review at this point. Perfect. Um, and I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I would like to say that I appreciate him submitting this with a use, really helpful for future reference. Um, 814 North College Street, Miss Kennedy. Yes, um, this is a conditional use request from Parker Lewis with Hydro Engineering Solutions on behalf of Ethereal Jackson at 814 North College in the Redevelopment District. Um, as you can see, this is the proposed site plan. Um, they are requesting conditional use approval for a multi-unit development. It would consist of 12 two units. Um, as I think a few of the things we discussed at packet meeting was the applicant's willingness to readjust and accommodate all of staff's recommendations. You can see sidewalks going out to College Street, although there's not currently a sidewalk there. It is proposed in the future and they've offered that connection. Uh, they've also add, added interconnecting sidewalks on the site um, to parking, as you can see here. Um, the dumpster screening and other things on the site they've added upon our request. Um, this site is a little bit unusual in that the future land use plan designates it as medium density residential, which has an average density of eight dwelling units per acre. However, the RDD zone permits up to 16 dwelling units per acre. Um, with this application showing 12, it kind of fits in between that um, because of the, can you go to the next slide? The applicant's willingness to address all staff comments in delivering a product that is back one. Right. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, and their willingness to adjust to any staff comments as well as this is their submitted architectural plan for the fronts that will face North College. Um, even though they are multi-unit, they are being designed as such that they would look like single-family homes and be more in keeping with the surrounding uses. Um, it is important to note, though, that other surrounding residential uses are of various densities, including cottages directly to the north, um, some duplexes just to the east as well. Oh, there you go. You can see it a little bit better. As well as some um, multi-units scattered throughout there. So because of the mixture of residential uses and densities in this area, um, as well as the efforts to make it more accommodating to the area, staff is recommending approval. Um, I've received a couple calls for information on this site, um, but nothing in opposition. And the applicant is here tonight to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, this does require a public hearing. If anyone would like to come forth. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Representative is here. Um, I have a question. <laughs> the sidewalks that were talked about and that you added, are those like really concrete? Is that affecting your ISR? Are those um, pervious? It's uh, impervious. Okay. We're, we're, we're there. We're right at the ISR number. Okay. Um, they could be other things if we get to that point, but right now they're just regular concrete. That was my only question. That's all right. No more questions? Okay, thank you. Commissioners? Move to approve item uh, 17. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Thank you. Warehouse distribution. Miss Kennedy. Yes, this is a conditional use request for a warehouse distribution um, located in the industrial park off of Humphrey Avenue. The site plan, it is actually an existing structure um, over there to the east. The applicant is requesting uh, approval for a commercial support use of warehouse distribution. Everything in the industrial park, of <coughs> course, or any industrial zoned area is conditional, and so that is why this is here before you tonight. Um, there were no communication other than a few um, last minute things from staff. Um, we did speak with the industrial development board and um, they just had a few questions for the applicant, which they already answered. Um, so they are not in opposition to this specific request. Um, staff is recommending approval. Wonderful. This does require a public hearing. Open that now. Just, just real quick. This was, this is the same thing that was on agenda and got approved back in 2019. No different. The only difference is COVID, and they went to go pull a building permit, didn't realize it had expired after 18 months, and they're back before you now. So, be happy to answer any questions. But essentially, this is, you know, on-call mobile convenience stores delivered to you wherever you're at type. So thank you. Thank you. Close the public hearing. Commissioners? Move to approve item 18. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any votes? We'll move to other business. Uh, Mr. Kip, the preserve. Ma'am, this is a request for a 18-month extension for the preserve phase 4C and 6B. Two phases, but just one plot. Um, they're uh, just asking for this request to, there was a change of ownership, I believe, and that's uh, the reason for the request. Um, they are doing work out there and will continue to do work. But, um, Staff sees no reason to deny the, the request. And here's a prox map showing where it is. And the plat that was previously approved. Happy to answer any questions. Does not require public hearing. Commissioners. It's just a time extension, nothing changed. 18 months. I'd move to approve item 19, provided that the staff comments, which were identified in the original preliminary plat review, be retained and addressed prior to submission of the final plat for approval. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, um, Arco North. Yes, ma'am. I'm yes, sorry. Sir. Hold on just one second. Who was the second? Who seconded that motion? Me. Okay. Thank oh, you. Oh, sorry, Marcus. Not, neither one of us heard it. Thank you. But both, but I think it was two people at one time. All right, so this is a conditional use extension request from the applicant for a, uh, a use that was, or an application that was approved in June, or that was approved in June of last year. It's a multifamily development located on the north side of North Dean Road. This is the site plan that you saw at that time. It would involve a 250-unit uh, multifamily development on 27 and a half acres. The after that, after it was approved by council, uh, in the since that time, it has changed hands from one engineering firm to another, and that engineering firm is requesting the extension since they are essentially getting started on this at a uh, uh, much later than they would otherwise have done so. It'll uh, set to it is set to expire in December 16th of this year. Uh, request or the extension, if approved, would uh, provide a new expiration date of June 16th of 2022. Okay. This does not require public hearing, commissioners. 
Move to approve item 20 of the time extension request. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Any opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Thank you. Um, we do have a couple of um, just things to, to chat about. That housekeeping. Is, yes, okay. housekeeping items. We do have a couple. Uh, one is the packet meeting for the September agenda falls on Labor Day and staff will not be in the office that day. <laughs> so we are um, asking that that packet meeting be moved to Tuesday, September 7th. And likewise, the November regular meeting date falls on Veterans Day and staff will also be at home then. Um, and we are asking to move or reschedule that meeting to Tuesday, November 9th. And packet would be? The day before, on Monday. Hmm. Back on the, on the September day, could you accommodate Wednesday as well as Tuesday and just extend that over one day because it's a long holiday weekend? Yeah. <laughs> which which date? date? I'm sorry. September from the seventh to the eighth. September one. So Maybe. have have packet on Wednesday. Yes, ma'am. Okay, sure. The, the, Is everybody the, else good with that? <laughs> we'll accommodate your schedule, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't mean for it to be quite so obvious. Okay, <laughs> we will make the, so this affects deadlines for moving the regular meetings. So mm -hmm. we will post those changes on our website. So just to clarify, packet meeting for the September meeting will be Wednesday, September 8th. 8th mm -hmm. And the November meeting, regular meeting will be Tuesday, November 9th. Is that good? Everyone's good. Okay, that's all of the housekeeping items I have. Perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, we're adjourned. Oh, oh gosh. Well, I'm sorry. That's, a, that's all right. We'll go back into session. I'll survive. <laughs> but, but maybe after, now that the meeting's adjourned,